In this video, we're going to cover the history of Emperor Constantine the Great, also known as the first Christian Emperor of Rome. The scholarly literature we will be using can be found in the description below. I'm following history and the topics for today's video will be who Emperor Constantine was, the historical context which he lived in, how he managed to become the sole ruler of the Roman Empire, his conversion to Christianity and how it significantly affected the future of the Empire as well as the history of Europe itself. Stay tuned. Before jumping straight to Constantine, it's necessary to get a sense of what the Roman Empire in the days of Constantine was like. The Roman Empire of the 3rd century was an empire in constant crisis. In the north, new and stronger Germanic warbands were invading over the Rhine River, and in the east, a young and aggressive Sassanid Empire was looking to expand into the Mediterranean. Still, the empire's greatest threat came not from without, but from within. This was the age of the soldier emperors, where emperor after emperor rose through the ranks of the military, grabbed power by force and ruled for a few years until dying in battle or being assassinated. The cycle destabilized the empire to the point that it nearly fell apart several times until one upstart emperor called Diocletian managed to grab power in 284 and keep it for a whole two decades, thereby breaking the cycle of the soldier emperors. In order to restore stability to the empire, Diocletian created a new political system called the Roman Tetrarchy. In this system, the empire was ruled by four emperors, two senior emperors called the Augustus and two junior emperors called the Caesars. Each of the two Caesars was handpicked and answered to the respective Augustus, and when one of the Augustuses died, the Caesar under him would become the new Augustus and pick a new Caesar to serve under him. This new political system decentralized the political power of the empire by removing it from Rome to the cities of Trier, Milan, Thessalonique and Nicomedia, which started to function as the emperor's headquarters. The system also meant that political power no longer was centered in the hands of one person, which removed the risk of the empire descending into crisis if one of the emperors was assassinated. The Roman Tetrarchy initially worked well and restored stability to the Empire, but that stability, as we will soon see, did not last for long. Which brings us to the main character of this video, Constantine. Constantine was born in the late 3rd century AD and was a typical product of the military governing class. His father Constantius was an army officer and successfully advanced through the ranks to acquire the title of Caesar. Being the son of one of the four emperors, the young Constantine was raised to be a military commander and accompanied the different emperors on military campaigns all throughout the empire. When his father died, the soldiers under him declared Constantine to be the Augustus of the western part of the empire, which was something Constantine accepted. However, due to the rules of the tetrarchic system, Constantine did not have the right to the title. That right belonged to the current Augustus of the West called Severus. However, Severus' power was slipping. In Rome, the Senate and the Praetorian Guard, resentful for the loss of status and privilege, proclaimed Maxentius, son of the then-retired Augustus Maxim, as emperor. Being neither popular among the general population or his own troops, Severus lost this conflict, with Constantine and Maxentius recognizing each other as legitimate rulers of their own respective domains. However, due to several events that will take too long time to go into detail here, their mutual respect gradually deteriorated. Maxentius' father and former Augustus Maxim returned to politics from his retirement shortly after Maxentius was declared emperor, and several times tried to regain the power that he had possessed while being Augustus. This came to a head when Maxim took an armed force and captured the imperial treasury at Arles, which was controlled by Constantine and once again declared himself Augustus of the western part of the empire. The attempt failed and Constantine swiftly moved against Maxim, defeated him in open battle and forced him to commit suicide. 
In response, Maxentius publicly professed to avenge his father, and not long after, he ordered statues of Constantine all over his domain to be destroyed. Constantine got the message and responded quickly. In the summer of 312, he crossed the Alps with an army of 40,000 men, and in a swift campaign, he marched his army down to Rome where he faced off against Maxentius. Maxentius had decided to leave the security of the walls of Rome and challenged Constantine to open battle. At Milvian Bridge, the two forces met, with Maxentius suffering a catastrophic defeat, with many of his soldiers and himself drowning in the Tiber River. With Maxentius out of the way, Constantine was now the undisputed ruler of the western part of the Roman Empire. Shortly after having gained control of the west, Constantine met with the current Augustus in the east called Licinius. They agreed to divide the spheres of influence in the empire between themselves, and in an attempt to consolidate their mutual respect for each other, Licinius married Constantine's sister Constantia. However, Constantine and Licinius' alliance did not last. Under the facade of respect and cooperation, both emperors were highly suspicious of each other, since the past conduct of both men demonstrated that their ultimate goal was to gain sole power, and war soon broke out again. Between 316 and 324, Constantine and Licinius fought several wars with each other, which ended in Licinius losing all of his power to Constantine, and later being assassinated in 325. With Licinius out of the way, Constantine had eliminated his last political rival, and thus won the Roman version of Game of Thrones, which as we will soon see, had long-lasting consequences for not only the future of the Empire, but for the history of Europe itself. Central to the reign of Constantine is his relationship to Christianity. By the dawn of the 4th century, Christianity was still a minority religion within the empire, and was under heavy persecution in a governmental campaign that was initiated by Diocletian. Constantine, unlike Diocletian, was early on very sympathetic to the Christians, and would later become one himself. The Christian author Lactantius writes that during the night before the Battle of Milvian Bridge, Constantine was commanded in a dream to place the Christian Chi Rho sign on the shields of his soldiers, and when he triumphed over Maxentius, Constantine is said to have attributed the victory to the will and power of the Christian god. However, converting to Christianity did not come without its issues. The majority of the people in the empire were still pagan, including most of the nobility which the Roman emperors traditionally had relied on to secure their throne. Constantine was well aware of this, which is why his governmental policies towards paganism generally were very ambiguous. Also within the Christian community, there were several conflicts going on between different subgroups, and since religion and the state traditionally had been intertwined in the Greek and Roman world, this meant that theological disputes within the church now became issues that was of interest to the Roman government. As a result, Constantine's government hosted several church councils to settle theological disputes, as well as sporadically persecuting minor Christian groups in order to maintain unity within the church. The Christian church got more political power than it ever had had before, but at the same time lost its independence with bishops starting to assume judicial and administrative functions and Emperor Constantine becoming arbitrary in church affairs. But outside affecting the church relationship to the empire, what effects did Constantine's conversion to Christianity and ascension to power have on the Roman government and the laws of the empire? Well, on an administrational level, relatively little. He kept Diocletian's tetrarchal system for governing the empire, but turned it into a dynastical system, keeping the titles of Caesars and Augustus, but only placing his sons and nephews as co-emperors, and thereby keeping the political power within the family. When it came to civil politics, he showed a lot of genuine concern for the welfare of his subjects. On several occasions when famine struck, he ordered for the distribution of money, food and clothing to people in need, and in 325 he outlawed gladiator shows as well as infanticide. When it came to slavery, Constantine made it illegal for slave families to be separated when an estate was broken up, and he legalized the manumission of slaves to take place in churches. However, it's important to note that slavery as an institution was something that Constantine never challenged. 
Like the Roman censors of Republican times, Constantine was also very anxious to protect what was considered to be the moral fabric of society. In his case, this mostly related to the consecration of marriage and sexual conduct. And here Constantine went, well, let's say a bit overboard. He issued a number of rescripts meant to protect the sanctity of marriage, and even went so far as to have ordered that parents who had been accessory to the seduction of a daughter should be punished by having molten lead poured down their throats. Pretty crazy stuff. However, beyond the effects on the empire's administration and politics, the greatest effect that Constantine had on the empire was on its underlying ideology. Over the course of the 4th century, the Roman Empire gradually lost its pagan associations and instead became viewed as a worldly copy of the Kingdom of Heaven with the Emperor as God's Viceroy on Earth. And lastly, we of course have to talk about one of Emperor Constantine's greatest achievements, which is the city of Constantinople. Despite having lost its political power, Rome still functioned as a sort of symbolic capital, but the city had a very pagan identity, being full of temples and also the seat of the Roman Senate, who still clung to the old ways. Constantine would therefore not be content with having Rome as his capital, and instead looked east. On the shores of the Bosporus, there had for centuries existed a small Greek city called Byzantium. Constantine made this city his new capital, and in the tradition of the Greek kings of old, he renamed it after himself. The city would come to be known as Constantinople, and would function as the capital city of a new Christian empire. The population started to grow quickly early on, and became the site of many of the monumental buildings that were constructed in late antiquity. The greatest one by far being the Church of Holy Wisdom, which in the 6th century by Emperor Justinian would be expanded in what today is the Hagia Sophia. The grandeur of Constantinople would live on for many centuries, but the same however cannot be said for Constantine. Constantine's reign continued until the mid-330s. While preparing for a military campaign against Persia, he fell ill at Heliopolis, and when the medical treatment failed, he tried to return to Constantinople, but was forced to take to his bed near Nicomedia. There Constantine replaced the imperial purple with the white robe so a neophyte, and he later died in 337, and was buried in the Church of the Apostles in Constantinople. So in trying to assess Constantine's legacy, what lasting effects did he have on the empire and on the course of history in general? Because of his conversion, the growth of Christianity within the empire exploded until it had become the majority religion, as well as the only officially legal religion within the empire by the end of the 4th century, and his decision to make Constantinople the capital of the empire helped laying the foundations of the future Byzantine empire. However, the most significant effect Constantine had on history, in my opinion, is how his conversion to Christianity and ascension to power gave birth to a millennia old discussion regarding the proper relationship between church and state, as well as a new Christian state ideology that would come to dominate European politics in different shapes for centuries. The idea of an anointed monarch ruling a large Christian community by the grace of God would continue to be the dominant state ideology in the Byzantine Empire, as well as in many European states until the outbreak of the French Revolution, and such a lasting impact is something that few other Roman emperors can boast of. If you want to learn more about the history of Emperor Constantine, I strongly recommend that you check out the well-written biography of Constantine called The Emperor Constantine by the scholar Hans Paul Sander. And don't forget that if you like this video and want to see more videos like it, hit the like, share and subscribe buttons.